Hi guys, it's me. I'm back again. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about handwriting. Um, I wanted to talk to you, but it probably is a good one for you to watch with your parents so that you guys can all get a sense of some of the ways we work on handwriting when we're in the classroom together. So um, first of all, I want to emphasize that any time you are doing an activity where you are using your fingers or your hands or your arms or your trunk, you are actually doing an activity that is going to help your handwriting because um, we think of handwriting as something that happens right here, but really it's your whole upper body involved in your handwriting. Um, you need to start with having good support from your trunk, your core muscles. Um, you need to have range of motion with your whole arm from your elbow to your wrist, wrist action and finger action. Um, and you have to have some strength in all of those parts of your body in order to support good handwriting. And so every time you're doing an activity around the house to help with cooking or cleaning or you know washing dishes is a really good one um, or taking out the garbage or folding laundry all of those activities are actually helping your handwriting believe it or not so i want you to make sure you're involved and, and engaged in all of those activities every day um, if you want a fun way to practice some um, very specific handwriting um, movements, I would recommend first that you go watch Mrs. Carrillo's video called Sandpaper Letters Salt Tray. Um, now, it's been a long time since you have practiced sandpaper letters, so, uh, but if you, re if you return to that video, you'll be reminded of some of the ways you practiced in the primary class, um, making those letters for the first time. And that's just a fun activity. It can get messy, so make sure you have your parents' permission. But I'm sure you can find a tray or a shallow box somewhere in, the, in your house that you could fill with salt or even something like rice. Um, in the classroom, ours is filled with sand usually, but I'm sure you can find a, a material to fill your salt tray with and um, trace your letters in there. That would be a great activity. Um, the other recommendation that I have is that we remember that multi-sensory experience is really valuable. And what I mean by that is um, trying lots of different materials, lots of different surfaces to practice your handwriting. Because I'm going to show you some activities using paper, um, and, and I've got some paper here. But I, um, before I show you those, I wanted to talk about some of the other ways that you can use items you have around the house to practice your handwriting. So um, one idea that I have is if you have some Play-Doh, go ahead and get a rolling pin and roll out your Play-Doh so that it's about a quarter inch thick to a half inch thick. And take a toothpick or a chopstick if you have some leftover chopsticks from the last time you guys got Chinese takeout. Or if you have, um, if, if uh, somebody in your house has a cuticle stick, which is a little wooden stick that you sometimes use if you're doing your nails, if you're painting your nails. Um, those are all good ideas. You can also just use a pencil. A pencil is going to get real dirty. Um, and write some letters in the Play-Doh. And then the best part is you just smush it all back together, roll it out again, and practice writing your letters some more. So that would be a wonderful activity for anybody from primary all the way through second or third grade can get a you know a good handwriting practice out of that and I think the fact that you get to smush the play-doh together and roll it out again might keep that activity going for a while so that's a good idea um, another one is if you have markers that can go on the window don't try this with sharpies please um, talk to mom and dad but they do make special markers that are used to write on windows um, and obviously you would need permission, but that would be a great place to practice some handwriting if that works out for you at home. Um, now, when you start doing some handwriting practice on paper, I'm going to invite you to use all kinds of different writing implements. I'm going to show you today with pencils and colored pencils because that's what I have on hand. But if you have crayons, um, markers, go ahead and use those for handwriting practice because it's good 
for your fine motor to be holding different shapes of things. If you have a chalkboard, now not everybody in this day and age has a chalkboard and chalk laying around the house, but if you do, that's what we use in the classroom for a lot of our handwriting practice. We use um, chalk on a chalkboard because again, like the Play-Doh, it can easily be erased and then you can keep up that practice. Um, and the whole activity of erasing and then starting over is actually fun and it keeps the activity going. If you have a whiteboard at your house and whiteboard dry erase markers, that's another one. Great place to practice your handwriting on there. Um, and I'm going to show you some activities here on the paper that will translate really nicely to the whiteboard. Um, and now when my kids were little, we had a, a toy called a magna doodle, which was, um, it had a little, uh, looked like a screen, but it really was just a magnetic um, area with a little pen, a magnetic pen. And as you trace the pen across the surface, it pulls iron filings to that spot. And it looks like writing that you can just, you know, erase either by rubbing the eraser across the surface. Um, I don't know if those are still popular. If you have one of those, that's a great place to practice your handwriting. And I also remember another toy that my kids had, which was an aqua doodle. It was a water mat. Um, and it did the exact same thing, only instead of iron filings, it had water. Um, I can't remember, I, I think you filled the pen with water and you used that across the surface of the mat. Um, so if you have either of those things, you know, deep in a closet somewhere, pull those out and use those to practice your handwriting. But if you would like to practice your handwriting on paper, then I, um, I'm gonna get ready to show you some of those activities right now. Now, um, your moms and dads grew up pr practicing their cursive handwriting on um, lined paper. And they wrote, because I know this because I did the same thing, but they wrote their letters over and over and over on the lined paper. And um, we do some of that in the classroom, but it gets real dull real fast. So I advise you to, um, I'm going to show that to you, but I want you to save that as a last resort after you've done a lot of the fine motor and gross motor um, building through all of those activities, helping out at home, and um, looked for some creative ways to practice your handwriting, either with um, Play-Doh or with a salt tray or on the windows, if you can do that with markers, and um, through the, um, if you've got a Magna Doodle or an Aqua Doodle. So I emphasize those, but, if you would like to do some practice on paper, um, what I typically start with is a large piece of paper like this one. And um, you'll need an adult to start you off. Now, if I do this, I have a feeling it's going to be upside down. So I'm gonna write my letter and then I'm gonna turn it around for you. So if I'm practicing the letter F, I would have the child watch me make my F, okay? And then I would invite the child to get a color, a nice bright color. Now let's see if I can do this upside down and trace my F that I just made. Okay, Ooh, let's grab a different color and trace it again. And this is where you can offer some pointers. If they are not going in the right direction somewhere, they might need a little arrow to help them. Okay, we're gonna grab another color and trace it again. And I hope you're able to see that what we're getting is a really beautiful, colorful letter F. So I would just keep going with all the colors you have until it looks really, really pretty. And then, well, we've got all this white space over here and you've been tracing and tracing and tracing and you could go, I mean, you could keep going with as many colors as you have. I might take out the black and the brown because <laughs> they tend to muddy things up. Um, so now what we could do 
is we could fill up our white space with as many F's as we can make. We're going to make big ones, little ones, tall ones, short ones, fat ones, skinny ones. We're gonna fill this page with all the F's we can make. We can even make little tiny F's inside the big F's that we make. Okay, I may not be able to do this totally upside down. Okay, that wasn't terrible. That, <laughs> um, but, uh, so we're gonna make little ones and big ones, and we're gonna make them inside the other ones that we make, okay? And you're gonna keep going until this whole paper is filled up. And what they'll end up with is a really beautiful um, piece that's colorful, that's fun. And um, when you look at their writing, you can notice which letters need more help than others. Now parents, don't get worried that you um, may not have been using your cursive handwriting since about you know sixth grade, <laughs> and that is okay. Um, you can go online and just look up Zaner Blozer cursive, and you'll see a place where they'll show you how to make the letters. But you also don't have to worry about this too much because as I said, those activities that are building their core strength and building their fine motor, those are all helping with handwriting. So I don't want anybody to feel pressured that they have to be doing this, but if it looks to you like you have an opportunity and that your child is interested in practicing handwriting, this is a great, a great way to do it. Um, this would be something I would, I, I show a lot of the first graders this, and they spend a lot of time doing this in the classroom. Um, the next stage of that activity would be to take our paper and to fold it into um, smaller rectangles because uh, as you've undoubtedly noticed, when they're kindergarten and first graders, they, um, they tend to write their letters pretty large. And the next thing we want to do after um, we've got the formation of the letter down, the next thing we want to do is we want to get that letter sized down so that it can start to fit on um, a smaller piece of paper. So now I might take and make a slightly smaller version um, and then go through that exact same activity, making it, wait, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, some, some of these things I can do upside down and some of them I can't. Okay, there we go. So we again want to trace and trace and trace to start with. Okay, and then we want to fill our paper with all kinds of these. Big ones, little ones, all different colors, okay? But then we might want to pick a different letter to do here and a different letter to do here and here. And don't forget the back. So now you've extended the work. You've added a little challenge because we're making them smaller. And you've increased the number of letters that you can make on a piece of paper. So when you're done, you're going to have lots of these pages that you can make a book out of. Um, and you could bind your book with some colorful paper and ribbon and um, you know, keep, or keep adding to it. This is something you could do for five to 10 to 15 minutes every day um, if, you, if you're interested. And parents, I wanna caution you, if your child is not interested, if they're avoiding this work in some way, don't worry. Usually we're avoiding that work because we are frustrated by the work. So if you go ahead and engage them in those other activities I mentioned, anything to do with large and fine motor is really helping them with their handwriting. Uh, so um, if they like to paint, just consider the painting that you're doing to be their handwriting practice as well. If they like to play with Play-Doh, that is their handwriting practice. So these activities are offered to you as an opportunity if the children can take it and run with it. Consider it something they can do without a whole lot of intervention and, and management from you. But if they're frustrated by this activity, my advice is to drop it and direct them toward Play-Doh, painting, coloring, 
something that they do enjoy and just consider that their handwriting practice for right now. It is absolutely helping them with their handwriting. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today for handwriting. So thank you for joining me. I really enjoy the idea of you watching this. <laughs> If you do this activity and you have some pictures to show me of your handwriting on a window or your magna doodle or your play-doh, I would love to see the pictures. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys later on. Bye guys.